All right, look, 5.3, transformation of sine and cosine. So in the earlier units, we have discussed about how to transform functions. Well, we can use that practice to be able to transform sine and cosine functions in the same manner. So looking at a sine function, we can transform it using the same letters we used in an earlier unit. A represents the, move, the vertical stretch or compress and the vertical reflection. K represents the horizontal stretch or com sorry, not K, but 1 over K represents the horizontal stretch or compress and the horizontal reflection. Minus D, well, if you have minus D, X minus D in here, it means it moved D units to the right. If we have plus D, it moved D units to the left. And then C also means that it moves up or down, up, C units or down C units. If it's plus C, it's up C units, minus C, it's down C units. Now, how to remember which one does vertically or, or horizontally, we talk about it in terms of what letters remember. AC is Air Canada or air conditioning, which we don't have in our school, funny enough. And then there's KD, which means craft dinner. There, somebody is always knows... <laughs> The fail-safe dinner for some people is definitely going the craft dinner route. So AC is Air Canada or air conditioning, and KD go together, and that's the horizontal. KD, you serve in a horizontal, and AC flies up and down. The Air Canada is an airplane that flies up or down. So AC is vertical, and KD is horizontal. Especially if you put it on a plate, it definitely goes horizontally. All right, now y equals a cosine and the same function, well, all that, that we changed here is which function we're talking about. Remember that a and c is vertical, k and d is horizontal, and that has not changed as to the previous units we've talked about transformations. Continuing, remember that a is the vertical stretch or compress, also known in a sinusoidal function, the amplitude. When we look at the amplitude, we only look at the positive value. So again, the absolute of A, so what number is here, that indicates the amplitude of a sinusoidal function. K now determines actually the period P, where P is equal to 360 over K, or 1 over K times 360. What's important to note about this is that K is the horizontal stretch or compress. Well, that will always affect a period of a sine or cosine function. A regular sine or cosine function lasts 360 degrees. That's where the 360 came from. When you stretch or compress it, you look at the 1 over k value. Again, it's 1 over k without the sine, and that indicates how the period got changed. So the period may actually stretch or compress depending on the k value. So you may have a bigger period or a smaller period, all depending on what your k value is. D actually determines something called the phase shift. So when we actually tra trace a actual um, cycle, wherever we begin that cycle, that will be your actual phase shift. It's kind of hard to tell on a graph what the actual phase shift is until you trace one cycle and determine where your phase shift starts. Next is your C value. What is C? Well, C determines something called the vertical shift, which you know the vertical translation. But in grade 12, we start to learn about something called the equation of the axis. It's not a bad idea to know what the equation of the axis is in grade 11. The equation of the axis, y equals C, actually turns out to be the middle. And that middle helps us determine how far up or down from the middle we're going to determine of the function goes, so our maximum or minimum. We use our C value to help us find the maximum or minimum, and we use our A value together with the C value to determine what the maximum or minimum value is. And we're going to look at examples of this. Moving forwards, example number one. You are asked to consider the function y equals and then so on. Here's the equation. I want you automatically to look at the equation and say there's something wrong with this equation. That's right. What's wrong with it? Hopefully you see that x needs to have a coefficient of, that's right, 1. 
X must have a coefficient of 1. So even before you even read the rest of the question, I recommend you automatically write out with X having a coefficient of 1. That means we take out the 3 from every term inside here, 3 from here, 3 from here. That gives you 3 on the outside and X plus 30 in here. Don't forget that when I expand this, it will equal 3X plus 90. And then there's the minus 1. And you're asked to do the following. What is the amplitude? What is the period? Identify, so, sorry, describe the phase shift. Describe the vertical translation. E, what is the maximum and minimum value? F, sketch the graph of this function within the following domain. So this is going to be important. So you have to actually sketch within a specific domain. So, knowing this, the first one, what is the amplitude? The amplitude, guys, that's right, is the A value without the sign. That means the amplitude is 2. What is the period? Well, the period is going to be 360 divided by K. 360, or 1 third, so 1 over K times 360, which is 120. So you could do 360 divided by K, folks, or flip this number like we know and stretch or compress the 360, which is 120 degrees. So our graph is actually going to be sh compressed horizontally by a factor of a third, which will be 120 degrees. Describe the phase shift. Well, it moves, phase shift moves left 30 degrees. Now, another option instead of left 30, you can actually write negative 30. So the phase shift will be negative 30 degrees. This is allowed only in sinusoidal functions. And describe the vertical translation. The vertical translation moves up or down, and it moves down 1. Another question I could ask is, what is the equation of the axis? If I ask that, your equation of the axis would be y equals negative 1. Very important. Next, what is the maximum minimum value? The maximum minimum value is going to be, now pay attention, it's going to start at the equation of the axis, and you're going to add the amplitude. That's right. We're going to start at negative 1, and we're going to add 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Then you're going to take the equation of the axis, that's our middle, and subtract 2 to give our minimum. Negative 1 minus 2 is going to give us our negative 3. And that, folks, is our minimum value. The next thing we're supposed to do is sketch this graph for this function. Well, the best way to do that is to take the equation and put it into a table, just like we did in the, previ in, in the previous chapters we've studied. So let's start it off. This is the equation that we want, folks, and what we need to do from that is get our basic coordinates. What is our basic first the sign is 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, and it's going to be the sine curve, that's right, the sine wave, and what are the values? 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And then the next set of coordinates are going to be 1 third x minus 30 degrees, negative 2y minus 1. How do we know? Well, don't forget in the previous year we talked about this. It's 1 over k times x plus d minus, sorry, comma, a y plus c, so k d a c, Kraft Dinner in Air Canada again, folks. Here we go. So one third x minus thirty and negative two y minus one. Keeping in mind, folks, what you see in the brackets should not be the same you see here. For example, three it should be one over three, and this plus thirty should be minus thirty inside the table. We plug these numbers into our actual uh, coordinates, the new coordinates we have for our basic sign, and we find out that the x and y values turn out to be these values. Now, you plug, again, you plug in these x values into this x equation to give you these these y values into the y equation to give you these y values and folks that's what you have to do to get the answer. Now what we're going to do is take those same coordinates we have and we're going to graph this. Okay so take those same coordinates and we're going to graph it. So x and y axis 
We have mainly negative y values, so we're going to plug mainly in the negative value. And we're going to determine our coordinates. We're going to go by 30s. If you look here on the chart, we can see that it goes by 30s. So we're going to go by 30s going across here. Don't forget, we need to go to 360. That was the parameters given in the question. So we're going to go to 360 degrees. And we're going to graph each of these coordinates. Now, note that we cannot graph this first one. There's no way. It's not in our parameters. We must graph from 0 degrees to 360. So, fortunately for us, we have 0 degrees, 0, negative 3. Then we go 30, negative 1, 61, 90, negative 1. And what you do is you follow the same pattern. So we're going every 30 degrees and we continue that pattern. So 90, negative 1, 120, negative 3, and so on over here, up here middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, and now what we're going to do is draw a curve to match all these dots. And here we go folks, hitting every dot as we go up and down, We and we stop at 360 because they want only the graph from 0 to 360. Now remember that this has a period of 120. There actually should be three cycles in here that you should be able to trace out, and there is, folks. So definitely we have the, looks like we have the right graph, which we do. All right, well, that's the end of the video. That's the end of describing how to graph and a graph for you. Have a numerical day. Take care.